Welcome back, everybody. It's Mr. Reality and Psychic Medium, Liz Cross. How are you, Liz? Great. Thank you. Walt Elias Disney. I've never talked to him, but I thought it would be fun to see how Walt is, what he's done, and what he's doing now. What are you doing now? He's at, This is following on from our Bob Iger probe, right? Because everybody's like, probe Walt Disney. And... And he's, he's like got his head in his hands. Like, this is not what I wanted. This is not, this is not family friendly anymore. So he even sees what's happening. I'm sorry. What was the question? It was, what is he doing? Let's see Walt. Is he around? Can he talk to us? Oh yeah. Walt Disney is here. Yeah. No, this is who has his he head in his hands. 65, way too young. Why did he have such a short life? He didn't want to grow old. Well, who does? I'm just going to be 300, the same age that I am right now. Um, can he share some of his earliest memories as Walt Disney about creating cartoons and just what, where did he have this idea from? Where did you have the idea of creating cartoons from? Uh, he's always done this since he was little. He used to create stories with his toys uh, he would create, you know, ongoing stories, different roles. Um, and this is all he did all day, every day. He created lots and lots of stories, characters. He wasn't so much interested in school, he says. He was <laughs> more, <laughs> really, you know, you know, some of the best people out there were never really good at school. Um, he says, I was a failure. I was horrible at school. Um, so how did he overcome the challenges of, you know, not getting a very good education and starting his own animation studio? How did you overcome the challenge? He just was very determined to do it. And he says, I got lucky. Like I always landed on my feet. That was the type of personality I, I was blessed with. And everything just fell into place. He was supposed to create this environment for families, for children. And that was part of his soul path before he incarnated? Yes, absolutely. A place where kids could be children and enjoy themselves. What kept him going? In spite of all that, those failures and getting knocked down him um, I mean he didn't see anything as a failure he saw everything as an opportunity are there any other reincarnated souls that stayed with him over multiple lifetimes who were like his rock that kept him going Yes, uh, his family, um, I feel like his children, he still has family here on the earth plane. I feel that very strongly. Has uh, he incarnated again since 1966? Have you reincarnated? No, 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 no. Can he share some early anecdotes of like funny things that happen that aren't in public record? In public record. Um, he's just talking about he wanted to make people love life. So He's saying to me, like, anything that makes people, you know, closer as a family, that was his goal. So let's, what, do you have any stories in particular? You know, he's telling me, 
he he would just see the faces of people light up. That's what gave him inspiration. That's what kept him going, that drive. Watching people and their faces, their eyes light up, children's eyes light up. And, and that was the spark of life, to create happiness and love. And even though he had to do it through this business, but the, he's telling me now, this business has been turned completely upside down. This is nothing what I envisioned for people. They've destroyed it. How does he feel that it's been destroyed? Uh, he's saying point blank greed. Greed for money, greed for opportunism. Overall financial greed. Um, and I'm saying, but why? What is it that? you know, makes the company or makes those running the company just so greedy. It's like they want more and more and more. They want power and control. They want to be the governing force. They want to be the voice. Uh, he's telling me they want to be uh, the, the source of public opinion, uh, trendsetters, uh, making, you know, things turn around in society. Mm. When does he feel that pivot happened? What decade? In the 80s. And does he feel that that is returnable to a golden time? Or, or 50 years later, are we still too far away from that? Or 40 years later? No, it's too far gone. It would You would have to completely shut everything down and rebuild it. That will never happen. Um, but it's about going back to those core values and the core value was happiness and nothing else. It was about people being able to come and have a good time or to be able to sit as a family and be amused and entertained. It's all gone pear shaped. It's all it's you know what I mean? Like he's telling me it's this is totally backwards. This is he has some regrets. He says, I wish I would have left some sort of manifesto of how <laughs> this company like a constitution, right? A manifesto of how this company will be run. He never dreamed it would be as big as it is now. And the reason it is, is because of this drive for power. Um, and that's okay being this big, but he wishes that he would have had a manifesto to, you know, have these certain guidelines that must be followed or the company would be immediately dissolved. Like that's how severe he, you know, he's talking here. And so does he plan to come back in a future life in a Disney line or is it too far gone for him to pull the reins back? Ooh, are you planning to come back in the Disney line? No. Will you be affiliated with Disney? Yes, he will. In a future lifetime, absolutely. Will you be a CEO? No. I feel, though, he will be quite high up an executive, and he's going to come in with radical ideas. So radical, he'll be bringing coming, it back to baseline? Bringing it back to baseline? Absolutely, he will try, and it's going to be the fight of his life. So he's reincarnating to come back and try and save the company. Wow. And is that how roughly far ahead are we looking? 50 years. All right, I got to hold on. I, I got to hold on so I can see it. Um, I'll push you around in your wheelchair. Yeah, or you I'll be around there. Me. Um, did he see the impact of technology interacting so much with his his idea of Disney? And what's he think of the way it's become now? He thinks that technology is fantastic. It can help things run more smoothly if it's used properly. What about taking out actors and actresses and 
and cast member. What about like it replacing the people on the screen? He says this whole AI thing is not going to last for too long. It'll it'll revert back to real people on the screen. He doesn't he doesn't see this going on forever. These cars, they're not here to stay. People are going back to horses. It's the same kind of <laughs> mentality, right? Um, did he, was he frozen upon his death? This is a rumor and a conspiracy. And will he be reanimated or was he, did he really die and he was cremated? Were you, I mean, you're really dead, right? Obviously, because I'm channeling. 1901, yeah. Um, did you, so... Uh, did you were you were you was your body put on ice no it was it was cremated if you could collaborate with any like artist or a musician in any era who do you think it would be Ooh, he quite liked steven spielberg What would he like to do with Steven Spielberg if he could? Steven Spielberg. He would like Steven Spielberg to be the producer of his, you know, ideas. Because he still has a lot of ideas for stories mm -hmm. that were never published. Um, he would love to work with Steven Spielberg. Will you work with him in the next life? No. He'll be dead. That's yeah. Yeah, that opportunity's gone. <laughs> um, what's he think about the modern adaptations of his classic stories? Does he happy with the changes or does it irk him? What do you think about the modern adaptations? Um, you know, he says I appreciate they're trying to keep up with what's going on in the time period, but certainly according to when he was on the earth plane, that was not something that he would have aspired to, but you know, he says it works. I'm saying to him though, but I find that people are now boycotting Disney and he realizes that. And that's a shame that now that's something he never, ever meant to happen. It's not, he's telling me it's not about putting your personal opinion onto the public. It was never like that. Yeah. So let's ask him about that. What does he think of the politicking of Disney as it's kind of going on now? It is going to be the death of the company if it's not stopped. What does he think Disney's place is then? If it's not as a money grubbing, and I say that lovingly, um, <laughs> opinion shifting entity. It's supposed to be pure entertainment and nothing more than that. And how, well, we can't ask that, but I would ask him when he looks at the world now and Disney now, what inspires him or makes him excited about the future and coming back to earth? Coming back home to Disney. That that's what is keeping him, you know, in this reincarnation loop. I mean, I'm saying, but aren't you stuck in it anyway? He goes, yes, of course, Liz. But knowing that I'm coming home to Disney and that I will admire my previous life but will you be aware that you were Walt Disney in a previous life? And he says, no, that's all part of the mind wipe, right? Man. I know, I know. And you know, the thing is, we did a whole probe on the mind wipe. Right. And it was very, very interesting. But so he will actually come back in the future, admiring his past self and won't even know that that was him until he leaves the earth plane again. What lessons would he like to carry into the next life if he could, if he didn't have to go through the figuratarium? <laughs> what, what life lessons would you want to come in? So 
he actually sacrificed a lot of time with his own children for the benefit of others. Ah. And he would like to have more of a balance. How many incarnations has Walt Disney had as a human being person? About 400. Well, Walt, we still look to you for entertainment and for fun. And I hope that people can look the other way when it comes to the politicking of Disney. Um, I have to ask you, what is your favorite ride at Disney? Not Walt. I'm asking you, Mr. Reality. <laughs> oh, mine. Oh, well, I haven't been to Disney in, you know, a lot of years. So um, um, oh, I, I, I can't remember. Say, it's been a long time. Oh, my goodness. Well, I have to say it's a toss up between the rock and roller coaster and the Yeti. <laughs> I love both of them. I like the speed of the roller coaster. I love the Yeti. Um, but I like it's a small world and pirates too. I I love it all except that crazy dinosaur ride. I don't like that. That well, will fix that the next time he's around. Yeah, let me ask him. Walt, what is your favorite thing in the Magic Kingdom? Seeing people happy. You see, that's all he ever wanted. What about the rides? What is your favorite ride? It's a small world. That's his baby. Walt Disney, thank you so much. And Liz Cross, thanks so much. Everybody out there, if you're not a member, go to patreon.com forward slash remote viewing and beyond and give Liz some love. Oh, wow. Thank you. And your tip jar in the comments. Bye, everybody.